looks at the title. Made in Norway, 16.75 pounds of pure sexiness, superior craftsmanship, design, color accuracy, precision, and of course, mass. I could never get tired of looking at this panel, especially the back of the panel. Ooh, look at this thing. You guys know what a neutron star is? It's one of the most dense objects known in the universe. And that thing is only 10 or 12 kilometers across. One teaspoon of the material weighs about 16, 18 quadrillion tons. And this is exactly what happened here. Speaking of mass, they actually compressed, squeezed all those features, every single feature, every piece of gel, and whatever this light can do, it's actually compressed in here. So when I received this light, by the way, I'm introducing to you guys the first YouTube channel worldwide to reveal the Luxley Fiddle. So you're looking at this cute little light here. As a matter of fact, there's nothing cute about this light. It's just about power in a small scale. On Sunday, November 21st, 2020, was its official release, and today is November 25th, 2020. There are only three people on Earth that have this light here, the Luxley Fiddle. That will be the maker of the light, and also the app developer, and the third person will be me. I think this is super cool, and I feel very special right now. Wait until I show you the back of the slide here. The serial number is 000003, which means this is the third Luxley Fiddle made. And this video is not sponsored by Luxley. They sent the light here for free and I do get to keep the light, but I'm not paid to say anything. There's no control whatsoever. There's no preview before upload. I just upload and that's it. Before I continue here, I want to tell you up front what's going to go on in this video. So I'm going to actually demonstrate everything about this light, every single feature, the entire menu, and also most importantly, how to update the firmware app without breaking your brand new light. Since you're here watching this very video, I'm pretty sure you already know what the Luxor Tyco is, what it does and everything. And I consider this an exact miniature version of the Tyco because it has every single feature in here, planted in here. So today we're reviewing this light. This is as high end of a light as the Luxley Tyco. I have so many of these lights here that I don't even count anymore how many of these lights that I have. They throw some light on the back, some RGB and everything. They're great lights. But the difference between all these lights and this light over here, the uh, enclosure of this light here, because these lights, they're very easy to put a dent in here because the aluminum is paper thin, and this is probably an aluminum and something else that I don't know what it is, but it feels very thick. This enclosure is about four millimeters in thickness, and it feels great in your hands when you hold it, and also this light is heavy, so the same way the Tyco is. Second of all are the LEDs here, because what you see, commonly available in lights like this. this is the uh, little lens LED type. This is also an RGB light, and this is also an RGB light, but as you can see, these two types of diode, this is what's available out there. That's including what the aperture light makes and also the uh, boiling light. Now, let me show you the actual front panel here, and this LED is something that you've never seen before. So this particular LED is here. They have a single diode that it has all the uh, CCT and the RGB lights built in one single chip, plus the stuff here that they put on the uh, this plastic cover here even allows a more directional beam. For example, this light here, as you can see, I'm putting my hand in front of it, and even far away, my hands are still being lit by it. So there's a lot of light spill here. So you either need to have a grid installed or some kind of a light shaping control kind of thing. Now the uh, fiddle here, as you can see, I'm putting my arm right here and it's like there's a grid here almost, but you have a lot of light control. And they appear to be very bright, but when, when you actually throw in the background there, they are not as bright. They are limited to uh, close proximity if you want a lot of power, right? And also everybody likes to shoot everything at f1.2. If you let them, they're gonna shoot at f.4, if there was such thing. It's like there's a grid in here. It's very directional. So I'm actually uh, putting the light right there. I'm actually gonna be aiming this light all the way in the background there running my RGB light and I'm actually flooding the entire thing there. I'm actually 12 feet away from that projection screen. Let me see here with this light at 100%. I don't know if you can see, but it is at 100%. 
no, this light. I also made a test in the background. There is a simple thing just using a light meter, but just to show you how brighter this light is compared to the uh, rest of the lights because of the type of the LED diodes they have and also again the type of the LEDs this one have and also this panel here that orients the light to be on a more spotty kind of concentration. The filter light comes with an included 18 watt USB and that's a USB PD compliant charger and a very generous USB type C cabling length. I would actually recommend you use only this charger that came with the light because if you have another charger it's required 18 watts for charger. So if you're using another charger make sure it meets the actual 18 18 watt minimum watts that this light requires for a satisfactory charging. Since we're talking about high-end lights, even the uh, quarter 20 threads, you're gonna love these threads because not only they're very deep, and when you screw something here, this material, this whole metal aluminum thing here, you can actually feel how solid that thing is compared to these lights over here, because especially if you're using a ball mount, every single light that I have, the threads here, they're very shallow so I'll never get to screw this thing properly. So this light here is not going to be a problem because whatever you have mount for those big ball mounts, the threads is plenty deep to screw all the way in, which is perfect. And there's a thread on the side and on the bottom because if they put another thread over here, you will lose uh, battery time because they will have to reduce the battery. You don't want that. So what difference would that make if you mount the light this way or that way? It's both horizontal, right? So you came out on the side, so the light is vertical, or on the bottom here. Just like the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the 12, you don't want to put that on the table because you're probably going to scratch those three lenses, which they're gorgeous. Same thing with the display here. So I'm actually going to install uh, one of those little furniture little pads. Black, of course, very shallow. One, two, three, four here. So I don't want to scratch the display because that's how I am with my things. So I would recommend you do the same thing. You know, they have very shallow, those little two millimeter thick ones. That's enough. Just put one, two, three, four. And this is always going to be risen from the uh, touching in the surface. Now, I don't know why you would use this light as a key light, but you can certainly do that as long as you back the light out and use some kind of a transparent diffuser. It can be a shower curtain all the way to a nice transparent disc, the ones that you fold and everything. But you can, in which, by the way, you can actually purchase the diffuser that they make here. It's not available yet. I wish I could show you. They're making a case for it as well because you want to protect your investment. This light is too pretty to be thrown in a bag as like if it is like a cable, right? If you want a case for this, it's going to be made. I don't know when. I don't know how it looks like. I have a slight idea. Again, there's a diffuser for it and everything that you want with this light and also even a magnetic mount here in case you need to mount this light so they make a lot of accessories for this light so right now all i got for you guys is just the light itself because i'm the only one outside luxly who has this light over here so again i thought this light was going to cost like at least 300 350 dollars and that's still a deal because it's a professional light there's a lot of lights in the market there the most of them they are consumer lights and of course they do the job they, they have the RGB, you can control the uh, saturation, the brightness, they got effects and everything. Most day-by-day -day jobs, including cinematography, movie scenes and everything, I don't see myself using a lot of effects, but if there is one effect that's extremely important, besides the police car or some bad bulbs going on on set, is the candlelight. And this light here happens to have the most accurate candlelight effect that I've ever seen, because all the other lights, when they... Uh, vary the intensity. It's almost like a square wave shape, so it's kind of uh, abruptive. And this one here is more like a wave kind of thing, kind of dims long and then like a short dim, goes up and then goes down. It features like wind, a breeze, no breeze, no wind whatsoever. So, so much thought, so much science was put in this light here, and this is only 200 bucks because if you can actually spend $150 on a balling light, why not spend the extra 50 bucks? It's just like a camera and the lenses, right? It's better to have one good piece of glass than five 
okay lenses because at the end of the day, the light is actually gonna pass through the lens to reach your sensor. You're not gonna be dealing with as much chromatic aberration, all that you know, softness, and especially when you are at the wide aperture. So when you buy a high-end lens, pretty much any aperture, I know most lenses at full aperture is never as uh, sharp as when you do like f4 and everything but even the high-end lens is gonna help you to have a sharper image even a full aperture so when you buy something like this here again investing in a professional equipment as they say you buy once you cry once instead of buying a cheaper light and say oh man i wish i got this one because the candle light is not as good as this one here so you follow what i'm saying just uh, invest the best equipment that you can possibly afford and have a light that's gonna last you for a long time especially like if you want to drop this light hopefully that will never happen because it's gonna damage this gorgeous finish here besides the cct and the rgb capabilities on this light here i actually have reviewed the Tyco before this one here so if you want to see the 150 gels that this light has built in and also a ton of effect each and every single one of those things in real time i have the uh, luxury Tyco review right here in which you can actually search and see the effects and whatnot everything that you possibly want to know about this light is there and since this light and this light do the same exact thing only on a smaller factor everything about these two lights here on that one hour long video you will have no questions about this light whatsoever this light has a lithium ion battery which will last about three to three and a half hours at a hundred percent full blast depending on the environment and also humidity and also temperature and also features a bluetooth 5 which allows you to operate this light up to a distance of 100 feet and also again the temperature humidity and especially the temperature hot and cold can increase or decrease the range of operation of this light, but technically is up to 100 feet away. And also the environment and temperature that you choose to charge this device or any other device that has a lithium ion battery, the charging time may vary depending on the temperature, humidity, and other environmental factors. And here's the back of the light on this very thick aluminum finish you have the nice uh, heavy duty powder coating kind of finish or whatever you want to call it. And to turn on the light, you will just slide this knob to the left and you have a gorgeous OLED display and the bottom obviously is your brightness and the top is your color temperature so when you start dialing the stops here it senses how gentle or how abrupt if you want to go so you can go very slowly until you reach 100 percent same exact thing here as little as 50 degree kelvin increments if you want to go all the way up you keep doing this until sun sets or you can just go all the way back here. Now watch what's gonna happen next. If you wanna crank this up to 100% real quick, there you go. Back to zero, literally two turns, you are done. And let me go back to like a 10% here. So call a temperature, you can go slowly or check this out. 2800, 3200, 4300, 56, 64, 72, 10,000. Back to 72, 64, 56, 43, 32, 2800. My opinion, as far as detail goes, this is absolutely genius. To go to the next page, you simply slide this to the left, in which you can actually still do your brightness here. And the same exact genius thing from zero to 60, and then you have your greens, you have your, your semi cyans or whatever, your blues, your magentas, and back to red. Or again, you can gradually, one by one, go very slow, and then until he senses they want something done fast and there you go the saturation you will need the app as of right now to control the saturation next we have the gels which are in excess of 150 as you can see here so you have all this preset gels here and then again you want to go all the way to the purples here just go real quick you will be there in a matter of seconds or you can go one by one and next we go back to CCT mode and we're not done here yet how to connect and disconnect the bluetooth not only you can actually disable the bluetooth you can actually make the screen rotate in case the light is placed upside down now this light here you can notice now this the screen flips you see that how awesome is that now here's another thing that actually blew my mind as far as meticulously designed software so imagine this is the same procedure of sliding the the knob here without even disturbing the Bluetooth or the screen rotation because doing the same procedure, you can actually either turn off the Bluetooth 
or disable the screen rotation with the same procedure with just one second difference. So to turn off the Bluetooth, you just slide this button here for about three or four seconds, no longer than that, Bluetooth connection is gone, which I believe even probably saves you battery time. Same way the Bluetooth off on the phone saves more battery time. So when you go to the Composer app, nothing is going to be detected. To put it back here, same three to four seconds, keep holding and the Bluetooth is there. Now to lock or unlock the screen rotation, guess what? It's just an extra second and a half without even disturbing the Bluetooth. Watch that. Screen rotation locked, slide mode button to exit. And the Bluetooth is still here. How freaking genius is that? And then same thing here for about five or ish seconds. And then boom, screen rotation unlocked, which means it's gonna flip again if you want to. Now, the only thing that's missing in this light that you have to use the app are two things, the uh, green magenta plus minus correction and the uh, effects page here. So I was asking, look, so is this something that you guys just like, you know, can just like throw another page here with the effects with the next from update? Apparently they told me that it's not that simple because there's a lot of stuff inside this light. I was actually lucky that I have the effects here because I wasn't expecting the effects or everything from the Tycho to be in here. So now I'm gonna show you guys here a quick tutorial how to use the Luxly Composer app. So you wanna click on the app here. And uh, I'm an iPhone person, and just so you know, Apple is changing rules and you're now required to share your location while you're using this app and a bunch of other apps, thanks to iOS 14. About the Android side, I don't know, but this is how Apple is, at least here. So app needs location access to use Bluetooth, press your prompt, let's go. So I'm gonna allow this once, now you see look for lights on the bottom left and then Lux Lefiro. And here's your CCT, HSL, RGB, the gels, effects, app effects, sequence, and even a camera. So the camera is gonna actually allow you, for example, see that purple background over there? Imagine if there's a client that wants that particular purple, maybe their logo, and then all you gotta do is open that camera and point to this purple here and the RGB side of the slide is gonna actually project that exact color that you see. If you want a particular red, a particular blue, you can actually, uh, on your blue sweater here, you tap on anything that this camera can see. You can also import a picture and uh, browse around here and tap on that particular color. This light is actually gonna reproduce the same exact color. How crazy is that? Try that with the aperture or the bowling or lights like this, that's not happening. And this is why you're spending 200 bucks on this light, which I still think is fairly inexpensive. I'm Louis with Art Video Productions and I'm having a very special guest here tonight with the firmware updates tutorial featuring Casey Krugman, the very maker of Luxly lights. Hey guys, Casey from Luxly here to go over the new firmware update procedure for the brand new Luxly Fiddle. Now before we get started, you're going to need to make sure that you have the most recent version of the Composer installed on your mobile device and you have Bluetooth enabled. Also, you're going to want to make sure that your phone and the Luxly Fiddle itself have a really good charge level or are plugged into the wall and charging. So first you're going to need to connect your Fiddle to the Composer app by tapping the Look for Lights button on the bottom left here. Once the light is connected, tap the info button next to the name of the light to get to the fixture menu. And then you just tap here to get to the update menu. On the left side here, you'll see a list of available firmware options. Tap the one you want and then tap to begin the update process. Once the update starts, do not turn off the fiddle or your mobile device. Doing so could damage the light. Once the process has begun, the app will start transferring the new firmware to the light and the installation process will begin. On the light itself, you'll see the status screen change during each step of the update. Once the firmware is loaded and fully installed, the light is gonna power down and restart automatically. The app will also tell you once the update has been completed, and you can either close the app completely or you're just gonna reconnect the light. And that's it. Your light's now up to date and ready to go. This is Casey from Luxley, back to you, Lewis. So let's talk about control here. On CCT mode, you have everything preset here from 3200, 5600, and then 7000. Of course, you can slide this all the way from 2800 degrees Kelvin all the way to 10,000. And also the effects here, like I was saying before, the uh, police car, for example, you can control flashes per cycle, cycles per minute. I'm actually gonna play this pattern here, right there. Let me increase the intensity here. 
So you actually have the flashes per second, duration of flashes, and also cycles per minute. And if that wasn't enough, you can actually do red, blue, and white, or red and blue only, red and white, blue and white, blue only, red only, and the amber thing here. So keep in mind to play each one of those effects. We have to stop here first, located on the uh, top left, near the intensity. To play the next effect, for example, the uh, pulse, one of my favorites, you press play. And here you can actually choose what color that is, any color. And then as soon as you release this, it's going to start uh, that particular color. I actually like to start on red. And again, pulses per minute, the lightness, you can go all the way from red all the way to pure white if you want to. And go back here to the uh, full saturation. And let me show you something else here. The lightning, this is a big one here. Because if you are shooting something, every single one of these portable little LED lights, what that uh, lightning is going to do, as soon as you play the effect, it's going to go and then two seconds, five seconds later, it's going to go again. And this is pretty unrealistic. Either you have to block with a, the light with a cloth. But this particular one here, you can set the interval from 0 seconds to 7 seconds all the way to a whole minute. So you decide how long or how often that lightning is going to play. For example, I'm going to hit the play button here. 8 seconds. So... Right there. You want to do 10 seconds, this is not going to happen until 10 seconds later. So the amount of control here is ridiculous. And of course you can do from CCT 8000 or 3000 Kelvin or 10,000 Kelvin. Whatever looks realistic to you. I had the Tyco for almost a year and I was speaking to Luxley regarding some things with the firmware update and it looks like my dream is going to come true. I had a great idea for them, uh, especially on the effects page here because this thing is so complex. Some other effects, they have so much control that's ridiculous. For example, the uh, police car here, for example. Let's say that I'm fumbling with these bars here and especially these numbers here, right? So I don't like what I did here. And then I'm not going to possibly remember what exact percentage or number here, whatever the thing is, that was from the effect of default. So I was telling them, why don't you guys let us double tap on each single one of those bars? Let's say they only want to fix the duration of flashes, this bar right here. So nothing else is going to be touched, only the bars that you double tap and then it's going to go back to the default values from factory. But the flashes per cycle, if you don't double tap or the cycles per minute, if you don't double tap, it will be remaining intact. If you double tap everything and then it should go back to factory default, every single one of those bars. Would that be awesome or what? By the way, you have the ability to save the presets on the bank here, but I also like right on the FX page to be able to simply double tap each one of those individual bars. Each one that you touch is gonna go back to the default, not to, not to zero, to default factory values. That would be insane to have. Let me show you the candlelight, how awesome this effect is in this particular light, whatever they did here. So here's the actual effect. We have the uh, breeze and we are at the candle setting. And then you have no wind. And then breeze. You see that super awesome gradual uh, ramp. And then you have windy. And storm. And of course you have the... Uh, Campfire, no wind, and then uh, breeze, and bonfire, and but the candle in particular is just amazing. Look at the uh, the way it ramps. I think this is super awesome. Now, if you want to do the luxury Tyco, I gotta do this press over here, so you control it and then back to the Luxley fiddle it will control only the fiddle the Tyco remains unchanged so you can actually control these lights all at once as a matter of fact of course this light is infinity times brighter than this light over here you can actually go to the mix and so the Luxley Tyco the maximum amount of brightness you can actually set it to this value here and the Luxley fiddle 
to 100%. So when you actually uh, ramp it down to uh, 7 or 8%, you see the Lux Letarco, you can actually bring it up a little bit. So when you actually crank this up to uh, 30%, you can actually make both lights, a huge light and a tiny little light, you have the same amount of intensity. Or you can put everything back to normal, which is not going to be fair. So if, if you don't want that to happen, you just bring it down the Tyco, for example, only its own sub uh, brightness setting. You can also disconnect the light, whatever you want to do. And on the saved here, you have the particular effect. For example, go back to the siren there. So whatever it is that I did there, how many flashes per second or whatever, you can also delete your effect. You also ask it to confirm. I'm going to hit cancel. And here's your CCT, you can actually range from 2800 Kelvin all the way to 10,000 Kelvin. And this preset uh, buttons here, you can actually do the uh, 3200, 5600, or 7000. Want to go back to daylight, just press on the little light icon here. You are instantly back at 5600 degrees Kelvin. And color correction to match other lights. Some lights, they are on the green side. Some other lights, they are on the magenta side here. So they have both streams of minus 100 or plus 100. So you can go tiny little bit, minus one, minus two, or plus one, plus two, or whatever, all the way to 100. You can also change values by uh, tapping on the actual numbers. If the 1%, for example, you can tap, you can actually write 64%, hit done, and then it goes to 64%. You can tap it once again, hit zero here, done, it goes back to zero. In this case here, you just uh, tap once the letter N, which is what I want them to release the next firmware update on the effects page. All you gotta do is tap on something that goes back to the uh, default values. And then here's your HSL. On top here is the full saturation. You can have everything from 0 to 360 or desaturate all the way down to white. You can also set the white point. What white will be either the uh, 3000 or 10,000. So I'm going to hit the default. So when you actually change the values here and go back to that, the uh, RGB colors are going to be different because the white point is set to different. You can also do a single RGB colors, red only, green only, or blue only. And then here the uh, gels, you can choose from all these gels here. And also there's 150 gels built in here. And then the effect, we have everything here from CCT chase all the way to uh, dimming. And more effects like, of course, the clouds passing, the bad fluorescent, and also TV, and also the television. Look at the controls that you have with this. This is absolutely insane. The base CCT, the tint, the uh, allowed CCT change, all these controls just for the uh, TV effect. Bad fluorescent, the same exact thing. What color do you want on CCT? Flickering contrast, flickers per minute. Same thing if you want to go to the edge of cell here, all the lights will be this color, you know, green here, green there, whatever. And then you can go back to the single and make the uh, fiddle only on CCT and the Tyco is still on RGB. And then you can actually go back to the RGB or edge of cell and change the colors there, the intensity. So as you can see, the fiddle is not even moving an inch here. Everything remains like the light is disconnected. You want to go back to the fiddle, you can actually uh, turn it completely off. And I'll, I love that dimming ramp kind of thing here. And here's the camera mode. So you actually tap there. And with the camera, I'm going to show you something crazy. I'm going to point right at the uh, projection screen. This thing turns to purple. I want the... Uh, this blue from this particular candy here, so I'm gonna use my Tyco with the daylight, so you just raise the proper color, right? So it changes to blue. And uh, this case here has a little bit of a, a little bit of red here, so I'm actually gonna click on the red and look what happens. Not only that, you can actually import a photo here and start tapping on things. It's gonna actually come to the, uh, you know, let's see the plant over there, so green. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. So that's the end of my review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you catch it, give me a thumbs up. That means I'm doing a good job here and I would appreciate the kindness. And if you catch, leave anything in the comment. I'll be sure to reply to everything that I see over there. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. And lastly, I'm going to leave you guys with the uh, Luxury Tyco commercial music video that I did. So I hope you enjoy it. So check it out. Uh, uh. Who 
turned the lights out? Who turned the lights out? Uh. Who turned the lights out? Uh. Luxly, uh. Tyco, oh it's bright now, shining. Looking like I just bought diamonds, my RGB values climbing. Cool temperature to the max, see them real value when them hues attack. All the ladies on the set, like who is that? Luxly, got your girl shining, got me straight, looking like a diamond. Luxly, love you when you put the light on me. It's just me with the drip under the Luxly. Get a grip, matter of fact, get your director involved. Tell them to come through, bring a checklist and all. You can guarantee place your bet. When I arrive on set, Luxly, it's as good as it gets. Uh, uh, Who turned the lights out? Uh, uh, Who turned the lights out? Uh, uh,